Welcome to a very special edition of Dhaka Tribune Presents Straight Talk. I am Dhaka Tribune editor Zafar Subhan, and my guest today is Tanvir Haider Chaudhary, a very eminent man in his own right, but here today on December 14th in his capacity is the son of 1971 martyred intellectual Mufazal Haider Chaudhary. Mr. Chaudhary, thank you so much for being on the show it's with my us. So I know this must be a difficult time for you. This is a difficult conversation for you to have. But um, you've written very movingly about um, December 14th and what it has meant for you, what it has meant for your family, what it has meant for the nation. Could you perhaps today, like I said, I know it's going to be difficult if you could talk us through a little bit about that fateful day in Bangladesh's history. Well, you know, I was uh, just four years old. I, uh, my birthday is on the 14th of November. Yes. So uh, that day, 1971, I was four uh, years and one month old, mm -hmm. exactly. And, uh, you know, uh, that's very young. Yes. And uh, you don't, uh, I, of my fa father per se, I don't really have that many memories right. before, before that day. Um, but I do think I recall that day uh, quite well. Uh -huh. You know, uh, because of the shock, the enormity, it. the change enormity, in your life after that. Yeah, life yeah. changed, and uh, and we've been over it so many times afterwards. Of course, also. So that day, like, stands out in stark relief for me. Yes. Um, and uh, you know, I, what I remember is uh, that these young men came in. Uh, we were in our, uh, we were living with our uncle. Yes. Uh, my father's youngest brother. Uh, with Fulhada Chaudhary and uh, so his family uh, with his wife and my two cousins and my brother and I were there and my mother obviously was there and these young men came in with their you know, faces covered with handkerchiefs tied on their faces and they spoke Bangla and they said that you know we just want to have a conversation with uh, uh, sir you know uh, our teacher and they said, you know, addressed him as sir and said that, you know, we would just take him away for a little bit to the military barracks and they would have just have a conversation and they would, we would uh, presently bring him back and, uh, you know, I mean, he's our teacher, so we would make sure that no harm came to him, etc. And uh, at a certain point, uh, one of these young men who were speaking, the handkerchief fell off that person's face. And uh, my uncle, my father's youngest brother and my, uh, my father himself, both recognized him and my mother, I, I, I have heard this story many times, uh, she passed away in 1990, so yes. uh, I, I have heard this story many times growing up and then um, my aunt actually is on tape uh, as having said this, that you know, this young man was Chaudhary Moinuddin. And he was your, had been your father's student, he was yeah. well known yeah. to yeah. the family, there was no doubt as to his identity. And he was also working for the, uh, the daily uh, Pool Pool Budesh, yes. and uh, he was, uh, and my uncle, my father's, uh, the middle brother, Etasham Hadid Chaudhary, he was the news editor for the Pool Budesh then. Yes. Okay, so he was a colleague of Etasham Hadid Chaudhary's. So the entire family knew him well. Yes. You know, so there's no, uh, there's no, no question, scope for no any, any, no, any, any ambiguity yes. here. So he was recognized and, and he said, you know, I mean, so he put, put, put the handkerchief back on and he said, you know, I, I will make sure that we bring sir back so that's something I, I remember and then he was taken away and uh, you know the older people started crying and we you know in you know young children's bravado we were saying why, why what are they crying about you know sure. and uh, there's only a few guns they actually had weapons with them so right. you know it's only a few guns and we were obviously you know, familiar with guns having seen them on television shows etc right so yeah so that's what it was I mean I, I remember that day well but you know I mean for the life of me, when I try to remember my father's face, mm -hmm. I can't remember the face. Uh, I remember, I, I try as I might, I can't seem to remember my father's face. Yes. If I try very hard, then it turns into one of those photographs that you always see and I've been seeing over these many years. Mm -hmm. uh, but uh, what I do remember is, you know, I remember the sleeves of his dressing gown yeah. because uh, we, had, we had this apartment in uh, the university campus and uh, he used to have, uh, he had this habit of, you know, he had this easy chair where he would sit down and he would smoke his hookah mm. and I would possibly get into his lap mm. you know I was I was two and a half three 
I would get into his lap and I would look down. I'd uh, look, uh, I look. I would uh, look to the front and I would possibly see his sleeves all the time. Yes. Which is why I remember the sleeves. Of course. Right? I remember episodes like you know I, he would always come back from the uh, from from his classes and my brother and I br brother was uh, three and a half years older than me so we would run to him and we would ask him what have you brought for us today and it would always be the same response but we w we would just do it for the heck of it you know yeah. <laughs> we would uh, uh, he would say it's a little ritual yeah a little ritual that we had and uh, he would have this this bunch of belly pool that he would bring in the, in the right season obviously yeah and he would put that on the table and said uh, and, and he, he would say Ag -buk yeah. you know just full of love and we would be sorely disappointed <laughs> you know of course because you know what is that <laughs> yeah <laughs> you're hoping for something yeah no I mean I can imagine I, I, I have a four-year-old son myself I just can't imagine being torn away from him at this it must be uh, un afterwards the days and the weeks and the months afterwards do you have any memory of that and sort of as it became, you realized that uh, he wasn't coming back? Uh, f for a long time afterwards, things just, you know, it all meshed into, uh, you know, uh, the months just, you know, kind of molded together. And what I remember was this, like, pervasive air of sadness in our house. Yeah. You know, because we would, uh, uh, I mean, from very early on, I just instinctively kind of, you know, understood that you know I our household was not like other hu households right. and I cannot like I can't throw tantrums I can't uh, you know I can't insist on having things my own way you know my mother was a very lively person yeah and uh, she was she was a huge fan of Rabindranath Thakur yes he, well, of course. she loved his music his poetry his uh, prose and uh, you know I mean I remember even within all that I remember you know uh, electricity failing and uh, you know it being late at night and uh, us staying up and she singing to us etc uh, and I used to be a critic of her singing voice but you know <laughs> is one always is with one's parents uh, yeah, ex exactly but the thing is you know I it's just it always uh, all, all of this comes back to me so it cannot have yeah. been all sad no of course and you, as you've written you said you know with childhood we always have happy memories yeah. as well however exactly. difficult the situations exactly. are which is yeah. one of the marvelous things about childhood and we are and we growing up we were growing up we were also also knew that you know there were many other families like us because we yes. grew up in the campus yes so many people were abducted from the campus that's right, right? so we knew and we had this kind of uh, fraternity of these families where you know we gravitated towards each other and uh, we yeah. knew each other well so it was, it was and, uh, and the other families who were there were very nurturing and very kind. And so, you know, I mean, for a long time, we didn't, I mean, of course, you know, there's something missing and there's an air of sadness, but it was not as bad as one would think, you know. No, we I mean, I can imagine, as you said, this is something which perhaps, you know, this was after all, 1972, the entire yeah. nation was recovering together. That's right. In its grief, but also uh, in its joy. We'll take a break now, but um, please join us after the break. I'm here with uh, Tanvir Haider Chaudhary, and uh, please do join us. Thank you. Um, welcome back. Thank you for being with us. This is uh, Zafar Subhan on Straight Talk with Tanvir Haider Chaudhary. Uh, Tanvir, so you've been talking a little bit about the immediate aftermath of 1971, growing up as a child on the campus, many other families similar to yours. Tell us a little bit about the following years, how it was perhaps growing up in Bangladesh and then seeing so many of the people who are guilty of these crimes not uh, being brought to justice and certainly in the case of your father and with many of these others this was you know there was a great deal of evidence this was very well known and uh, it was no secret who were behind this and how was that how were those w w did that make things more difficult was that uh, um, could you talk us through a little bit of that uh, those years I think you know I mean uh, I, I have written a little bit about this also that yes. you know so a lot of these families uh, I mean, what happened, of course, is like you know, a crushing blow. Yeah. Uh, you know, you're the head of the family being abducted and killed, and people of this stature. You know, yes. Uh, 
Uh, so there's a like, I mean, a vacuum that cannot be filled. Yeah. But then what also happened was the country changed, as you were uh, alluding to. Yeah. And uh, and uh, you almost became defensive of mm -hmm. your your own stature as you know a member of a martyred uh, uh, person's family. family. Uh, and uh, so, you know, I mean, I remember, I mean, my mother passed away when she was 58 years old, mm. 1990. And those were very diff different times from now, you know. Yeah. Now you can, you know, now you can say Pakistani Shena Bahini and you can say Bangabandhu Sheikh Mujibur Rahman and, you yeah. know, I mean, at least the paraphernalia of the Mukti Juddho and the spirit of it, you know, is, yeah. is there uh, out in the open. Uh, but back then it was a very d different the time. The late 70s, the 80s, they yeah, were very, very different very time. different times. And uh, I remember my, I, I, I think I remember, you know, my mother's heart broke that day on 14th of December 1971. But yeah. I think whatever little, you know, I mean, she soldiered on for 18 years, 19 years. But I remember, uh, you know, I mean, we were given an apartment uh, along with all the other martyred mm -hmm. intellectuals' families by 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 Bongo and yes. you know the university administration for 15 years yeah and the understanding always was that this would be renewed yeah a lot of, of course yeah. yeah and the a, a, a lot of martyred uh, uh, intellectuals families or art mother other other martyrs families actually got a permanent uh, place yeah. to stay in right and we were like anybody else i mean we were young children these were i mean as i've also talked to you about and we've written about uh, you know, they were in their 40s, these, these yes, all absolutely. these intellectuals, and they were in the middle of their life. So they hadn't, they, they were not expecting to die. And yes. So they hadn't made, you know. These I mean, kinds they, of plans. Yeah. Why would they? Yeah. yeah, exactly. They had no assets or anything. So we were, I mean, uh, we were, uh, my mother was 39. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, so we were, you know, I mean, we did not know what to do uh, with ourselves. Yeah. And uh, so 15 years, and so 1986 it ended. Then it was extended for two years, but those were diffi different times, a Shad right. regime, etc. So we were continually being told by people who lived in the campus, by whoever could say a word to my mother that we should leave. Mm. And we were very young. We were uh, still studying, etc. I was in Dhaka University, so was my brother. And uh, so we were continually being told that we should leave. And uh, there was this, uh, this uh, father of a friend of mine who was a was an influential teacher. My mother went to see him, mm -hmm. ask him for, you know, because he was involved in syndicate, etc. So he, uh, so she went to see him and to ask him whether she could do, he could do something about extending, uh, you know, the term of, uh, of our stay. And he said, because, you know, my mother was, my mother was very involved with the Mohila Shumiti. Yeah. And then uh, certain people from uh, the, the Army League, uh, in particular, I remember Shahara Khatun. Yes. You know, they were very involved with uh, uh, Aumi League as well, uh, with uh, mm -hmm. uh, Mohila Shamiti as well. Mm -hmm. So they were very close and everyone knew that, and you know, I mean, our pr present Prime Minister is actually a student of my father's and yes. she has always respectfully remembered my father, etc. And she remained on like close terms with my mother. Yes. So everyone knew that they were, you know, they knew each other well. So he said that, you know, you have all these connections, use those connections. No one in the university will do anything for you. Mm. And, you know, all of this, all of this contributed to, you know, I think what happened to my mother eventually, mm. you know, because... Uh, well, she was very young too. She was very young. And uh, so, so all that, it, it, was a, it was an uphill battle. Yeah. And uh, very different country, as, we, uh, as I've been saying. And uh, then you saw later on, I, I'm glad my mother did not live to see this, but uh, the Mutir Rahman Nizamis and all these guys, becoming ministers and flying our flag and so mm -hmm. forth, you know, and that's just, that was soul crushing. Yes. That was soul crushing and at that point in, uh, in our lives, we did not, I think none of us, you know, I mean, none of the progeny of the, uh, inter uh, the martyred intellectuals of 1971, at that point expected that we would live to see a day yes. when these people would be tried yes. in, in, in independent Bangladesh and they would be receive uh, punishment. So yeah. I, we did not. I, I, I don't think we dared hope that it. it well, it was so happen. different. But so tell us a little then about how important these war crimes trials have been in terms of not just for you and as a family and the other families as well, but in terms of Bangladesh as a country regaining its soul. To a 
Well, you know what? I mean, we talk a lot, a lot about, you know, uh, uh, whether the war crime trials were beyond reproach, mm -hmm. you know. But, I mean, could, can, could Bangladesh have uh, continued mm -hmm. as a going concern, really? As, mm -hmm. as uh, could, could it, have, could it uh, have sustained? Because these people were against the very idea of Bangladesh, yeah. you know. And, uh, I mean, it's all very well to say, or well and good to say that, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I, ethically, I am against, uh, you know, capital punishment also. Mm -hmm. But in a situation like this where, you know, uh, there can be a change in regime every five years, and then the next regime can come in and, like, and reverse wipe the everything. Slate clean. Yeah, yeah, reverse everything, and these people can be made ministers again, etc. Yeah. So, what, what do you do? Yeah. I mean, what, what are the options? Yeah. And I've talked to human rights lawyers who said, this, uh, you know, some of them are actually involved with uh, this, this cause and they're aware of what happened in Bangladesh. And some of them actually have the same opinion. Well, I would say this, that, you know, at the end of the day, you know, Bangladesh as a country does have the death penalty. Yeah, and, you know, people exactly. are sentenced to death for far lesser crimes. That being the law of the land. The I law of the land being what it is, yeah. if, if uh, evidence supports their, be their receiving uh, the highest penalty, Mm -hmm. on a particular, uh, you know, uh, crime, then, you know, I mean, so be it. I mean, yeah. you know, I, 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 I don't celebrate people being, you know, I mean, I celebrated Shohidul Alam's being set free. Absolutely. I, I do not, I do not celebrate uh, people's being put to death. Absolutely. But it's never a happy occasion. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, you know, I mean, if, if the law of the land supports it, so be it. I agree. Um, We'll take another break right now. We'll come back and talk about this a little bit more sure. after the break. Sure. Uh, please join us after the break. This is Straight Talk with Zafar Saban. Thank you. Welcome back. This is Dhaka Tribune presents Straight Talk. I'm Zafar Subhan. My guest today is Tanvir Haider Chaudhary. We were talking about the war crimes trials and what they meant to Bangladesh. And I mean, I think, I mean, here's the thing, specifically with the case of Chaudhary Moinuddin and uh, uh, your father's killing, it seems to me that the evidence there is extraordinarily strong. And um, there can be no, no question about that. And I think it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very good thing that, uh, that this sentence was passed. Um, that must have been something you and your family were working towards for many years. How did it feel when it finally, I think it was in November 2013, if I'm not wrong? Uh, I, think, I think it was around that time, yes. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I mean, obviously my... And the other tragic thing, you know, I mean, apart from the fact that my mother wasn't around to see that day. Yes. My brother, uh, who had actually given a written deposition yes. to the International Crimes Tribunal in 2011, mm -hmm. I think it was ar around August, mm -hmm. he passed away oh, mm -hmm. uh, in December of that year. I see. Um, and that's a whole different story. Uh, but uh, So he did not live to see the day when uh, this man was sentenced to So it's only crimes. been you then? It's just me. I am the only one. But, uh, you know, I... Uh, my my uh, my father's oh, uh, youngest uh, brother's son, mm. who's who was actually eight years old in 1971, right. so he was there also, right. and he had he has vivid recollection of it. He was the lead yeah. witness, if I'm exactly. not wrong, exactly. in the in the case. So he went, and we we went together, uh, and uh, you know I will always be in his debt for what yes. he's done, if the Karhad the Chaudhary. Uh, he went and he testified. I was there with him. And uh, so, you know, I mean, of course, you know, it is, it is, it is closure, it is, uh, but the man is, you know, there in, you know, like hiding in plain sight and he is yeah. a like prominent citizen of the UK and uh, we, we all know, right? Yeah. You know, Prince I'm shocked. I mean, I'm shocked that even after all of these revelations and there's so much abundant evidence of, um, of his crimes, that he can still retain any kind of a position in a country such as the UK. I don't know either. I don't know as a nation whether we've done enough. Okay. You know because 
obviously there's this extradition thing where you know we have death penalty so the uk will not extradite but they have extradited uh, terrorists to countries that have the death penalty yeah there is that they do that yeah. absolutely so when yeah. they want to they can exactly yes. so whether we've put enough pressure on them yeah. whether we've uh, been as strident as we need to be mm -hmm. uh, as far as that is concerned i don't think we have yeah i, I, I there are uh, people uh, you know uh, involved in the movement in London, whom I'm, 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 I'm in touch with, and they do what they can. There's a Gono Jagaran yeah. Moncho chapter, there's Kathak Dara Nirun committee chapter, etc. Yeah. Uh, we're, we're in touch with those people, and I don't think we've done enough. You know. So in a sense, in the fact that it happened, when it happened, I mean, if it hadn't happened now, if it hadn't happened over the last few years, as you mentioned, you know, you're the last member alive of your family, everyone's in their 40s and 50s, they're getting on, it would have been too late. It was just really just in time. And the witnesses and the yeah. evidence, you know, so much evidence was, has already been lost. That's witnesses right. have died out, you know, so yeah. many of them have. And uh, yeah, so I mean, I don't know, if not now, then I don't know how it would have happened. Yeah. I, I, I actually have written something on this at some point. Yeah. Uh, that, uh, you know, I mean, this is the only regime that could really have done it. Yes. Because they wanted to, well, whether it was because it was politically expedient or whatever it mm -hmm. was. They're the only regime that could really have done it, and this is the only time that it could really have happened. Done, yeah. You know? No, I mean, I think it was so important for mm -hmm. something like this to have happened. Um, I mean, you know, two days from now is going to be December 16th. We talk about the victory day, victory of Bangladesh, but I think December 14th is so important because it tells us two things. It reminds us of the cost, the price of that victory, but more importantly even then, it also reminds us of what the stakes were. I mean, one hates to use words such as, you know, a battle between good and evil, but I think in 1971, it was that. Oh, absolutely. There was a right side and there was a wrong absolutely. side. And this is what we are fighting against. People who would do such a thing, absolutely. such as happened on December 14th, you know, rounding up people, taking them away two days before um, the armistice, two days before, and, you know, torturing them and killing them. I mean, this is what we were up against. In a sense, it really says everything about uh, what 1971 was all about and why it was so important Absolutely. to fight that war. Absolutely. Yeah. And which is why I think, you know, I mean, this amorphous concept, Ekaturet uh, Chetona, that we talk about, yeah. uh, I think an essential part of that has to be the freedom to express yourself. Yeah. You know, because you can't, how can you talk about that with, uh, when you have a situation where people not, are not able to express themselves, you know. I mean, this is, that is the crime that they were hunted down for. Of course, and so many of these people, your father included, were intellectuals and scholars exactly. and writers and thinkers. Because, they, yeah, exactly, they, because, they thought, because they upheld certain ideals, because they thought in a certain way, because they were putting those ideas down uh, on paper, and they were able to influence hearts and minds, yeah. you know. So this is, I mean, so that freedom has to be there. If, is the, if the Bangladesh that we are living in mm -hmm. is to live up to the spirit of 71 that we talk about, you know, I mean, that freedom has to be there. That, that's something I, I feel very strongly about. I agree with you 100%. And on that note, thank you so much, Tanvir Haider Chaudhary. It's been wonderful having this conversation. I really appreciate thank your you. being on the show with us today. Um, thank you very much. Um, thank you for tuning in. Uh, this has been Dhaka Tribune presents Straight Talk with Zafar Zaban. My guest has been Tanvir Hadar Chaudhary. I hope you will join us again next week. Thank you very much. <laughs>